Hey guys, welcome back to the Truth Be Told podcast. If this is your first time joining the Truth Be Told podcast, welcome to it. My name is Alexis Monet Howell and I get the honor and the privilege of having conversations with you each and every episode. I'm super excited about today's episode because even though I had something else planned, I really feel like it's so important to give some life updates and to share where my heart is currently, what I'm walking through, um, who the Lord is revealing himself to be to me in this season and just to really talk about that. So imagine if you and I were meeting up for coffee or in my case, ice cream, because your girl loves some ice cream. And we were just talking about our week, our day, what's been going on in our lives. So this is what this conversation is all about. It's really a life update since we've talked last and just all the things that I've been learning in the in-between times, right? So I'm so excited to get into this, to have a conversation with you. I'm so honored and blessed that you are here and I value your time and your life. So thank you so much for being you. Uh, I really just want to, we're just going to talk. I have my notes here, but you know how we do. If you've been watching for a while or listening for a while, we just let the Holy Spirit do what he want to do and say what he wants to say. So it's no different in this episode. Um, But I really, again, want to give you a life update of what's been happening. As the pictures that you can see, I've been able to do some fun things over the past few weeks and just disciple and learn about discipleship. Um, I've also been dealing with different things personally. um, And and I've talked about up here, my anxiety and the battle of what that looks like and the things that I'm doing to help me overcome anxiety and inviting the father into it. All the different things um, have been happening recently. And Uh, If I could really sum up this conversation and this season of life that I'm in, it is full of waiting seasons, discipleship, exhaustion, and the tender, good, kind, loving voice of God. So we'll start with the waiting seasons. And and I just want to be quite frank with you guys. My family and I are in a waiting season. We are believing the Lord to fulfill some deep desires of our hearts. Um, We've actually been praying collectively for these desires to come to fruition for about two years now. And and in this two-year waiting time, uh, we have grown some deep roots into the Lord. The Lord has uprooted some things that are not of him from our hearts. There have been a lot of molding and and correction, conviction that has come about in each one of our family members as we've waited on God. And so it's been a really refining moment for us because it is as though we are in the fire. And um, we believe that when we come out of this fiery situation that we are not going to smell like smoke, but we are going to smell like the fragrance of Jesus. We are going to give God glory where we are and in what is to come. And and we're just so blessed by how the Lord has pursued us in this time of waiting. And so for you, maybe you are waiting on God to fulfill something that you have brought before him. Maybe you've brought it before him once or several times. And please understand that you're not alone. I and my family are in that time, but I believe the Lord has showed us um, facets of his character. I think that's the right word, right? (laughs) Of his character. Um, of just who he is and who he wants to be to us and who we are to him. So hopefully we can get into that. Um, but I, as I've mentioned, in us waiting, feeling like we're in the fire, really believe that we are. There are some things that we've been holding on to. In fact, my family and I listen. Well, we didn't listen to. We actually read a Bible plan talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace and just all the revelations that come from that. And it's been super encouraging. We've done it through the YouVersion Bible app. If you're interested in finding hope and confidence and a firm foundation as you walk out your fiery trial, I will I will definitely include that link in the description so that you can um, be equipped as well and, and walk out the best of the best in your fiery trial, right? Um, so in, in the waiting season, 
as I've said, the Lord has revealed parts of his character that have, I believe are foundational to where he's carrying us. And, and I know that one of the ways that the Lord has showed me himself has been through just his voice. And I've never heard the audible voice of the Lord, but I do know whenever he speaks to my heart and what he's saying. And there have been times where the Lord is encouraging my family collectively through a song, a repeated song that just gives us hope. When we hear it, we surrender to the Lord. We praise him for who he is. Um, there are words and phrases that the Lord gives us to help us hold on. There's nature. It's in the birds chirping and in the birds flying that we know that the God who watches over every sparrow cares even more and values us even more as his kids. There are scriptures, again, as I reference about the sparrows and the wildflowers in Matthew 6 and how, how he cares and dresses and loves and and looks after those things so much more he loves looks after and carries and cares about you and I. And so it's been taking biblical truth and applying it. It's in looking at the nature of God and or the nature around us and seeing God in them. It's been songs. It's been uh, sermons. It's been a phrase from a pastor. It's been so many things where the Lord is like, keep holding on to me. And I just feel like in waiting seasons, our, our grip for holding on can get a little bit loose. There are a lot of things happening in our lives. There's a lot of things happening in the world. And sometimes it can get a little bit overwhelming. And the waiting just is, it just seems like a waste. Sometimes it seems like a burden. It You just want it to be gone. You're ready to step into what you want to step into. And we have learned, I have learned that the ways of the Lord are different than ours. The kingdom living is different than the way that I would want to live personally. Um, And so that's something that I've learned about kingdom living. Kingdom living is not comfortable. Kingdom living is not cute, but kingdom living gives God glory, which is good. Um, Kingdom living encourages his people and strengthens them and, and calls out things within them that they wouldn't know was there had not fire refined them. And so what I've learned about kingdom living is that it is not an absence of pain, but it is the presence of God in the pain. Um, I've learned about in kingdom living that it's not the absence of suffering, but it is this ability to surrender to the Father in the suffering and to know that Jesus himself understands us in our weakness. It talks about that in Hebrews. And, and there are these truths, again, of God's character, of his word that keep us going and they help us hold on to the hope that the Father has given us. And and for you, I hope that you are learning the character of God and you understand that kingdom living is different than comfortable living, than your personal ways of living. I have been like, oh my gosh, I thought it would be easier in this situation and it's not. But the Lord doesn't promise easy. He promises his presence. And so I know that even though this isn't easy, whatever that is for you or that is for me, the fact that the father is there with us makes it worth it. And I think that's something that has really been an anchor for me is knowing that, Lord, this isn't easy. (laughs) I'm ready for this to be over, quite frankly. But I know that because you're in it, you have a purpose for it. And because you have a purpose for it, you're going to get the glory in it. And that is the goal is that God would get the glory that he so well deserves. And so therefore I surrender and I praise and I continue to walk hand in hand with the father. And it has been such a beautiful time that I've seen and the ups and downs. And that's really where you see the Lord is in those kind of like low moments is where you really understand his character. So I'm grateful to know him and to learn more of him and to live for the kingdom and not for myself. And he's taken that out day by day and purifying my heart for sure. Cause there's a lot of things that's got to get checked and be renewed. And he's doing He's doing the best he can (laughs) to make something new out of what is often selfish and uh, prideful and broken. And he is good at what he does. Uh, I'd also mentioned earlier that I've gone through stages of exhaustion 
in my Christian burnouts video, if you haven't listened to that, um, I talked about how sometimes you can get burnt out and just not have this fire to pursue the Lord like you would have maybe in a past season and how that's normal. That's okay. But the purpose uh, or the goal is even in the burnouts that you would continue to pursue God and make that a discipline and that you would be blessed by it. Uh, I've also in that time, I was super exhausted and for several weeks, I was super depleted. I mean, emotionally, physically, spiritually, I was just like done for between college and content and doing good things for God's glory and getting the opportunity to love and serve all of those things. They take effort, they take energy, and they can be exhausting. And so I went through several weeks of just utter exhaustion, just wanting to take a break from doing content, from serving, from, you know, just needing to breathe. And the Lord and his kindness, even when I was tired, week three, right? And I kept going, kept going. The Lord knew what my breaking point would be. And before I broke, he spoke. And um, I actually received a message from someone asking me to give them advice and guidance in their spiritual walk. This refuel the fire once again to continue to do what I do, which is to encourage you to pursue God. And in pursuing God, you will see his purpose for your life and experience the goodness of his character and give him all the glory again that he so well deserves. And so it put a little fire under my butt and I am, though still exhausted at times, the purpose for which my exhaustion is coming from is worth it, right? Like I know what I'm doing this for and who I'm doing it for and therefore I keep pushing. So maybe you're exhausted as a mom or as a sister or as a college student or whatever season of life that you are in, you're exhausted, depleted, ready to regain energy, ready to throw in the towel so that you can just like lay back. I think everybody, there's discernment in that. I'm not going to tell you to keep pushing, keep going. And you're supposed to take a rest, really go to the Lord about that thing. But I, I do believe that, um, the Lord knows how to rejuvenate us, to refuel our passion for whatever he has purposed us for. And I just encourage you to go to him and to get a word from him and then live out what he shared with you. Something else that, and just really a life update, and I've been blessed and had the opportunity to go to a discipleship event that I've never been a part of before with a church that I've never heard of before. Never, I don't know any of the people and um, got the opportunity to, over the weekend, chat and disciple and hang out with eight amazing middle and high school girls at a particular church and, um, you know, just learn about them, be able to teach them more about Jesus, tell them more of who I am. And it was just a really cool opportunity. I've got to tell you though, I'm only 21, but I haven't been to like a summer camp in a few years. And this two day event like wiped a girl out. Like I was exhausted for a week. I was still regaining my energy. I was groggy. I was like, these girls like wiped me clean. And um, it was such a fun opportunity because I learned what discipleship looked like. Um, it's not just about teaching about Jesus, but living like Jesus. And, and in that time, since then, up until now, there's been a lot of things that the Lord has called out in me about discipleship and what that looks like. And there have been times that I have succeeded in discipling other people and failed miserably in discipling um, folks. And this is something that I'm still wrestling in and getting the Lord's discernment on how do I disciple the ones that you have given me? Like their specific needs, every girl is different. Therefore I pursue them differently. And in order to meet a need, uh, you have to go to the God who knows all needs and how to fix it. So there is this thing that I'm currently walking through of how do I disciple the way that you want them to be disciples so that they may know your love and to be encouraged. Um, so I just, I never want you guys to listen to a podcast episode and be like, this girl got it all together. No, she don't. Listen to Christian burnout, listen to anxiety, listen to, you know, it's not about you, which was like one of the first episodes that we had. 
this girl does not have it all together. Praise God, but the Lord still in his kindness holds me and he holds you and he wants you to know how he loves you and how he cares for you and how um, you are loved deeply by him. So there's just been a lot of different things, some exhaustion, some correction in my discipleship, some seeking the Lord, learning his character, hearing from God. It's been so sweet. But the sweetness hasn't come because, as we talked about, everything's been great, but because God's always been there. That is what brings the sweetness about of life is that this isn't, this don't feel right. This don't feel good. I don't like this, but God is here and this makes it worth it. This makes it good because God works all things for the good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose and his will. And so I know that anything not good in the hands of God will be good because God is good. Um, The last thing really that I think to share just an update is grief. My family and I, we lost my grandmother two years ago. Her three year heavenly date is coming up in September. So we got a little bit, but grief is hard. And maybe you are grieving. We just recently celebrated Mother's Day. And so for both of my parents, without having their mothers, it was hard on them. And it's hard on my sister and I because they were our grandmothers. And and there is a grief that comes about every single day, I know, for my family. And, and we all grieve differently. But there's no manual for grief. There's no... There's no way um, that you can, when you figure out, when you are experiencing grief, it's like, oh, I do this next. It's an emotional roller coaster. It happens at different times. It'll come at you and you don't even know where it came from. Grief is unexplainable. It's an unexplainable, unbearable, sometimes pain. And what I've learned about grief and Jesus is that Jesus gets it. Jesus gets the grief. In fact, in the Bible, um, whenever one of his best friends, Lazarus, passed away, obviously him being God, he knows what's about to happen. Yet he weeps. Yet he mourns because he is surrounded by people he loves and and their mourning brings about his mourning. And, And then also Jesus grieves whenever we grieve because he's experienced it. He has a heart of compassion for us. And he is not this like stank faced God who looks at us and is like, get it together. But he actually gets down with us and holds us and carries us and loves us and wipes our tears and reminds us and rubs our back that he is good, that he is God, that he's got us. And that makes grief better because we know that God gets it. When we understand that the life we live, the breath that we're breathing, the grief that we're grieving can give God glory, it's worth it. Now, though there is not a manual on how you're supposed to approach grief, I do believe that the Bible gives us things to hold on to and to um, step into as we grieve. And this applies to anything else in your life too, I believe, but specifically with grief. It's Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And it always, it just talks about Jesus saying, come to me. Come to me, all of you who are, um, have burdens that are heavy, that are weighty, that are overwhelming, that are just like crippling you. Bring that to me. And then let's do an exchange. I will take your burden and I will give you my yoke and my, my burden, which is easy and light. The Lord exchanges what is weighty to us for what is weightless and and he does so because he loves us. And so Matthew 11, 28 through 30 is one of the most encouraging verses I've had in my grieving time period. And I believe that it is comforting to anyone who is in need of their burdens to be lifted, financial, uh, a physical ailment, um, a kids gone astray, prodigals, like whatever it may be, Jesus has said to you and to me to come to him. Go to God. First Peter 5, 7, one of my mother's favorite verses and how she explains it is so funny, but it is about casting everything at the feet of the Lord to give him 
all your anxiety, all your worries, all your questions, all your situations at his feet. Why do we give things to his feet? Because it, it symbolizes like I am not worthy to be in your presence, but I'm here. And then the Lord scoops down, takes what we've given him and carries it for us. And then he does Matthew 11 and he gives us his burden and his yoke, which is easy and light. What I hope you guys are encouraged by is to know that you are not alone in your waiting season, um, that there are things that you and I both have to work out in our life. For me, it's discipleship. I got to get better at that. And that is okay to want to get better, to need to get better, for God to do some new stuff in and through you to take out the old and replace it with new things. Um, I, I hope that you are encouraged to know that Even though you're exhausted, um, the Lord at the right time will give you the boost of energy that you need in your trial, in your fire, in your situation, in what seems overwhelming. I hope that you would see Jesus in the fire, that you would hear his instructions, that you would read his word, that you would surround yourself with men and women of truth, of um, Bible-believing people, Christians who love Jesus, so that you will be held up and encouraged each and every day as you continue to walk out the path that the Lord has specifically written in your story. What you're going through right now is for a season and joy does truly come in the morning. And I only know this because my God promises it. And not only is he a promise maker, but he is a promise keeper. So that's really all I have for you guys. I have, that's pretty much my life update, waiting seasons, discipleship, God's voice, and exhaustion, group two. Um, But yes, that's pretty much it, y'all. I love you guys so much. If you have not already, please be sure to like um, this video. Comment below what's encouraged you. If you have any prayer requests, if you have anything that you want to share, be sure to put that in the comments. And also, uh, subscribe to the Truth Be Told podcast YouTube channel. It helps me out a ton. I love seeing you guys and love seeing your comments. So please go and do that. I love y'all. Bye. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the Truth Be Told podcast. I hope it's been an encouragement to you and that you've had a moment to laugh, a moment to learn about the Lord and have this newfound fire for Christ and to pursue him and the path that he has specifically for you. I'm excited for the journey that the Lord has for you and I'm so thankful to be able to talk to you each and every episode. If you have not already gotten your copy of my book, Dear Broken Girl, you can head over to Amazon and get it there. When you get your copy, please be sure to leave a review on Amazon and share any of your thoughts with me on my Instagram account at Dear Broken Girl or Facebook account at Dear Broken Girl as well. I would love to see your thoughts on Dear Broken Girl. Um, And so Dear Broken Girl is written to teach and remind you of your worth in Jesus. So please be sure to get yourself a copy, your mama a copy, your friend, family, or even a stranger so that we can all be encouraged and be reminded and even taught who we are in the Lord. Also, I want to tell you about my Facebook ministry, Lava Lexi Howell, which is a place for me to sit down with special guests ranging from 16 to 60s or even older or even younger. And we talk about Jesus and where they are, what they're learning from the Lord, who the Lord is to them in their season of life. It's an amazing conversation that I want you to be a part of. So head over to Facebook and search for Live with Lexi Howell. Be sure to like the page, share the content, let your friends know that this is a conversation for them. Speaking of liking and sharing, be sure to subscribe to the Truth Be Told podcast on YouTube, podcasts that you listen to. Um, be sure to follow me at Dear Broken Girl on Instagram, on Facebook, and even on Facebook, my personal page, Alexis M. Howell, where you can see all the weekly and even daily encouragement that we have for you so that you can learn more about Jesus, that you can grow in him, and that you can live for him. It's all the tools, the tips, the tricks, the study tips that you need to grow in your faith with him. So that is what I have for you guys. But before I let you go, can I pray over you? 
Father, I am so thankful for your son and daughter that's listening to my voice right now. I pray that you would bless them, that you would give them peace, that you would have your favor over their life, that you would use them for your glory, that every pain that they have experienced, would you use it for the purpose to which you have called them to. May each and every conversation that we have in these episodes be an encouragement to them and may they go out in their different spaces and places to proclaim your truth, to know their identity in you and to remind other people of just how good you are. I ask for your guidance over their life, over clarity, over their life, and everything else, God, that they are in need of. I pray that you would provide for them with your presence. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.